watching online this morning. We just want to say good morning to you. Thank you for tuning in to today's service. I am excited for today's service. I am so excited for um, Pastor Sharina that is in the house today, my friend. Oh my God, I am so excited to see her today. You are in for a treat today. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord. Let's just, everybody, please stand up. Let's just give God all the honor and the glory this morning. We praise you. Let's give him honor this morning. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your worthy to be praised this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. As I was studying um, a week ago, God, you know, I'm a, as, as you all know, that when I get up here, I ask God, what is it he want me to say for the people? And loudest day, God said, sacrifice. Sacrifice. What are we sacrificing for our walk with God? Jesus. Now, sacrifice in the natural. In the natural. Sacrifice means the act of giving up something you want to keep. But in the spiritual, it means sacrifice means giving to the Lord whatever he requires of our time, yeah. our earthly possessions, and our um, energy to further his work. Our willingness to sacrifice is an indication of our devotion to God. Amen. There are things we must let go of if we want God to use us for his work. If we want to become a weapon in his hand, we need to give out something that's called sacrifice. Yeah. So, looking back, I, I, there was something in my spiritual walk that I've been struggling with, to be truthful. And God knows my sacrifice came the night when we had Bible study, when we talked about generational curses. When I thought about what I was doing and it wasn't glorifying God, it immediately stopped. It immediately stopped. And I knew it was a plan that God had, had for all of our lives. But little things that we try to hold on instead of letting it go and give it to God. Like those bad habits can fall on our children, on our children's children. You know, is, is it worth it? It's not worth it. So this morning, I thank God for freedom because I've been I was battling that thing for years. And God dropped that off me instantly because I started to think and I'm like, Lord, I don't want to care that this, this spirit and it drops down to my grandbabies or, you know, it, it's important how we live because it can fall on to different people. So the scripture that God gave me for this morning, it says Romans 6 and 13, do not offer yourself any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather after yourself to God as those who have been bought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. Let's bow our heads this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you, Father. The word today is sacrifice. So we pray, Father, if there is anything that's not like you, Lord, that we give our whole heart, mind, soul to you this morning, Father. I pray even as the speaker of the hour comes up this morning, Father, that you will give us a right now word, Father. Give us ears to hear you clearly this morning, Father. We pray that your presence will be in this place like never before, Father. We pray that you will touch us from the of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your will will be done in our lives like never before, Father, from the woman of God. We pray that the blessing of God will come through her mouth, Father, and pour out blessings upon us, Father. We thank you for change in advance, for what you're doing and all that you're going to continue to do in our lives today, Lord pray for every person that is in this building today, even those that is watching online today, Lord. I pray for their spirits to be kindred with you. You will walk in the calling like never before. It is so important in these last and evil days that we are living in to live right, Father. So whatever is not like you, Lord, we ask that you will take it out right now in the name of Jesus, Father. That we will begin to walk in the spirit of prosperity like never before, Father. 
We just thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord. And we call it done in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, right there while the fire is lit. Open up your mouth and give it glory. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, somebody do it. Come on, somebody do it. Come on, come on, come on. You have come into this house. You have come into this house. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And what the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on.
this house, heal this house, heal this house, your presence, your presence. Who want that today? Heal this house, heal this house, heal this house, your glory, your glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 
You should already be excited for who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What he's done in your life. Hallelujah. I know what he's done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all ready? All right. Come on. Put your hands together. The psalmist David said, Who is man that thou art mindful of? On the son of man that you would consider me.
Yep, yep. Hey, everybody clap your hands. Great! 
Feel this atmosphere with his glory. Feel this atmosphere with his praise. Danger seen and unseen. From danger seen and unseen. From the enemy's plan, plot and scheme. Yes, you highly to worship you I 
Olga, right there, I just need you to continue to minister right there. Jesus, all power 
in your name All glory to your name We reverence your name We cry out to name Jesus, we need you Jesus, we have told you Jesus, we're waiting on you Jesus, show up for us Jesus, we call you Jesus, we call you Jesus, we call you Jesus, we call you Demons tremble at your name 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 Jesus, 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 Demons tremble. Everything unlike him has to go. Everything attached to you that is unlike him, I command it to go right now in this atmosphere. We call you Jesus. Almighty oh, one, I'm the Father. Take the Holy Spirit. You're the will and the mirror of the will. Bring down the trouble, Lord. You are. You are. You are. We refuse to stay still in your presence. We refuse to stay the same in your presence. We refuse. We refuse to be still and standing. Everything in the atmosphere. Everything in the atmosphere. Everything in this atmosphere that is not like you, oh Jesus. We send it to dry places even now. We bind suicide. We bind depression and oppression. Lord God, we bind that inferiority complex. Lord, we bind that feeling like we're not good enough, Jesus. You're the I am, you are. You're the I am, you are. You're the I am, you are. You're whatever I need you to be. You're whoever I need you to be. You're whatever I need you to be. You're the I am, you are. Isn't that amazing? Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. Will in the middle of the wheel, yeah. Is the wheel in the middle of the wheel, yeah. You're the form of Gilead. You're the, listen, you're the
up into your life, Jesus. I am, you are. He's the I am, you are. You are the I am, you are. He's the I am, you are. You are the I am, you are. There's no one like you. I am, you are. I have to tell I'm just going to say, surely, surely, there's no doubt in the word surely, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy. That means when I'm walking up on the scene, I got goodness and mercy walking along with me, amen? And see, my praise has already busted down the door that God said was mine to walk in anyways. We pray for the Lord to enlarge our territory, but that when he's trying to enlarge it. But don't you know that goodness and mercy is what's going to follow me. So that doesn't mean it's just on the side. It means no matter where I go, goodness and mercy is following me. And see, for some of y'all, y'all trying to double dutch with God. You're trying to be one foot in and one foot out. That's fine. When you try to go out, you didn't feel comfortable. So goodness and mercy is still with you. So this man is going to follow me all the day. Trouble on aisle seven. Y'all get your seat for me, because listen, I truly want us to get through some of this real quick, because the atmosphere has been set for the woman of God. Amen. And I'm so excited. So let's give a good big hand clap for all the way from Ohio. Amen. We're acknowledging and acknowledging Pastor Greg in the house. God bless you. And his wonderful wife, Pastor Sharina. Amen. We honor you on today. Amen. And those watching online, we got people that are tuned in this morning from South Florida, Connecticut, Virginia, New Hampshire, Georgia. They're coming in all over, amen? So we wave hello to you. We honor you on this morning, amen? Woo. Now, don't forget Bible Study Tuesday. We talked about double vision on this past Tuesday, and it was, I'm hitting this place right now, but God, you're showing me something so much greater. How do I deal with the place I'm in right now, but you're showing me something so much greater? So if you didn't get to tune in, make sure you go back and watch that. And leaders, don't forget, we have our meeting this Saturday at 10 a.m., more details. So if you work on Saturdays, make sure you adjust your schedule accordingly, amen? Now listen, we're about to do our tithes and offering. And with gosh, yeah, I know we're going to get excited, but listen closely. I know we normally don't grab an envelope. We do text to give or electronic giving, but I do want you to get an envelope and a pen in your hand because I want to be obedient to what the Lord is saying. And Brother Jesse already does this every week. You want to put on here what you're trusting God for your seed to do. 
because I'm telling you, there's great and mighty things that are happening right now that I can tell you are literally blowing my mind. Last week, I told you how I got offered this crazy, crazy job. And Bishop John Bart, who enjoyed Bishop John Bart last week? Amen? Yes. And we went out with him and his family after service last week, and he said, Pastor Toby, why didn't you take that job? And I said, the money was good. Y'all remember, I said 170000 a year, and I could work from home. Quita said, I'm applying. But I told him I, Sunday night, I said, that's not what God has for me. And sometimes we walk through the wrong door because we get moved. But Bishop and I flew to Tennessee on Monday morning, and I had a 9.30 meeting already in the morning, and I went for a virtual phone call. When I tell you the blessing in the door that God is opening right now, I literally ran upstairs. Bishop was sleeping. I was shaking his ankle. I said, you will not believe what God is doing. So I keep telling you about the power of your seed. And I'm telling you, when this testimony is fully put out there, it is going to be crazy because I can't even believe what God is doing. I just said last Sunday, God will open doors that no man could open. And that's exactly what he's doing. And we always say it starts from the top and it comes all the way down. So I need you to write on the back of your envelope, what are you trusting God for? Because we know it's already good ground, amen? So what are we trusting God for? And if you're giving by debit or credit, I actually urge you just to go to text to give. It'll make your life a lot easier, amen? So the text to give, give me one moment, I'll get it for you. Also, if you want to do cash app, you could do the dollar sign, the Vine Ministries is the cash app. And if you want to do text to give, the number is 844-893-3677. All you got to do is text the word give, G-I-V-E, to that phone number, 844-893-3677. But how many are excited this morning to give? unto the Lord. Amen. I need you to stand to your feet. I said, how many are excited to give to the Lord? Amen. See, you got to understand the power of your seed. Sister Shalana said this morning, she was talking about those generational curses and how she said, I had to stop something so it didn't trickle down through my generation. But know that your seeds that you're sowing now can trickle down the generations. Because I'm telling you, my son's about to be 21 years old. And on Tuesday, we're going to see a realtor because we are preparing him to buy his first property. And he's not even 21. And that's because the seeds that I'm sowing is trickling down generation to generation. you got to understand the power of what you're giving. Amen. Dick and Darrell, if you can come forward with the basket. And I know we're all into technology, but sometimes we just got to bring it back to some of the way it was. Amen. Amen. So once again, who's excited? Who's trusting God for something great and mighty? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this seed that we have on this morning. We thank you, Father God, for trusting us to do and uh, operate out of obedience of what you've asked us to do. Father, even as we wrote this morning on the back of these envelopes, we're excited about the praise reports that are going to come through as a result. And even as Bishop prays over these envelopes this week, Father God, we know it, we know, we know without a shadow of a doubt of who you are, who we serve, and the power in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we trust you for it right now. And everybody say amen. Amen, amen. Whenever you're ready, you could come right up. Tap that basket. Put your seed in there. Be excited knowing.
good to have you here today. And as I'm about to bring up the speaker, who is excited to see Brother Drew this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so excited to have you here. That He's just here for a minute, but that he'll be back permanently. Amen. But we just thank him for his service. He's been overseas for over a year. Amen. So we salute you. We thank you. We acknowledge the sacrifice of being away. Amen. Amen. So who's ready for the word this morning? Amen. I want us to rise to our feet. Bishop's going to get you set with a microphone. And let's just give another hand clap to... Oh, go ahead. You're good? Let's give a hand clap as we honor the woman of God. Amen. in my seat thinking, wow, <laughs> I know I got on this nice jacket with these red heels, but you are truly looking at a burnt sacrifice because anything you place on the altar of God, when he touches it, he changes it. You know, who he touches can never be the same again. So you are looking at a product of God burning me over and and over and, and, and over again. So for those who might be going through something this morning, for those who might have had a little bit of a press, for somebody that might have a situation at home, at the job, in your body, in your mind, I am a witness that on the altar, God touches whom he changes. You can never be the same. Laying at the altar of God for 10 years. God, who am I? God, who did you make me? Three suicide attempts. Depressed. I was abducted at gunpoint, snatched up and taken in a car. Left for dead in an alley. But I'm a product of the altar. Ah. Whom he touches, he changes. Pastor, help me out. Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Burn it away. Burn
you're going to break through. In order to fully understand the word that the Lord has on this morning, I have an Old and a New Testament text that I want to draw from. Is that all right? Hallelujah. When we look at Exodus 14 and verse number 13, the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, 
ye shall see them again no more forever. <laughs> Lord, don't get me too happy because I got to deliver this word up in here. Don't let me run out this say, God, hallelujah, God, I submit this body for your glory because I can get happy about it. Ah. <laughs> And when we look at John chapter 11, 43 and 44, you can take that down for your notes. Lazarus had died, and Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus, and he said three powerful words, Lazarus, come forth. When we look at John 11, 43 and 44, Lazarus, come forth. When we look at breakout and breakthrough, you might say, Pastor Howard, how is it different? If I had a breakout, didn't I have a breakthrough? Well, if you imagine a large box up here, about the size of a person, and a person is in the box, and let's say there's wax paper taped all over the top, maybe it's a surprise birthday. When you start to break out your hands, you had to find enough strength to break through resistance. There's not going to be a breakthrough if there's no resistance, if there's no attack, if the enemy is not on a rampage in your life. What resistance do you have to even try to break through? So they break through. So we're looking at the box and we can see the hands and, and, and we can see a little bit about the person, but... It's not until you break through that God allows you to fully not only break through resistance, but to break away from resistance. <sighs> to break is to interrupt a continuum of uniformity, to separate or to cause to separate into pieces. Out is revealed or made public and through is to move to the other side. So what God is saying on this morning is that I not only want you to break out, I not only want you have to have a mental disposition, but I want you to break through. <laughs> it reminded me of the butterfly that sheds the outer skin and becomes what it was all the time. I always say your purpose is not a download, it's an upload. Stop asking God for your purpose. Stop laying at the altar saying, God! Ah! Purpose is not a download, strategy is. Strategy is a download. How to God is a download. But purpose is an upload. The butterfly was always in the caterpillar. It was always in you. But the enemy wanted you to stay in the skin so long that you would die right there because there's an appointed time that if it doesn't change, it dies. <laughs> so the burning is necessary. The fire is necessary. Has anybody ever experienced necessary fire? That fire that you don't care if your makeup is on or off. You don't care what you're wearing. You will kick those shoes off and get down to business with God and say, God, I love you. God, I thank you. Hell at the house, but I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Has anybody ever been through necessary fire? Woo! <laughs> that fire that reveals the upload, that reveals the purpose a little bit. It's in the fire that change is going on. And I've looked at the molecular structure of fire and when you tear a piece of paper in half, you can put it back together. If you break a glass with enough expertise, you can put that back together. But when something is burned, it literally changes to the point where it can no longer be the same. What? You mean to say that I can come up and 
to a four wall building in Orlando, Florida, and I can come in one way and I can go out a whole nother way. Only God is able to do that. The way that God is able to do that is by interrupting our normally scheduled thoughts. You are what you think. I am no different physically. My name on my birth certificate is still the same. But God has done a transformation, a work on my mind that causes me to see myself the way that he sees me. And if you're not careful, people that don't understand the change will try to say, oh, you prideful. Oh, you bougie. Oh, you suchy much. No, I'm a daughter of the king. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes me whiter than snow. I'm a daughter of the king. That's why I hold my head up. That's why I tell my children they don't have to accept any and everything that this world and society is trying to give them. We're daughters and sons of the king. So people do who don't quite understand the transformational process that you're going through will try to get you to get back in that skin. Wait, 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 wait. You, you coming out too much when, when you sung that song, folks were delivered. So you need to sit down and be quiet. You, you don't need to sing that loud. It's okay to do that here, but don't do that on the corner streets. Don't do that in a homeless shelter. Don't do, keep that isolated to the vine. I don't want you to take that to the world. But when God does a, does a burning, there's something that happens at the altar. When I say a product of the altar, I literally mean morning prayer. Laying at the altar year after year. Father, what's going on? Who did you make me to be, Father? Who am I in you, Father? And I went from, who am I to, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. It's your praise and your worship that invokes the heart of God. That, 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 that's how you get stuff from God. I said, Daddy, can I? Daddy, can I? Lord, I love you. Father, I need a little healing. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give that to you because you worship me anyway. I'm going to give that to you. That's your reward. That's because I know you love me. Woo! Instead of asking God all the time, our praise and our worship sets the tone for asking. Our supplication is last. <laughs> if we supplicate at all, because he knows what we need before we even need it. But God wants someone in this place I done traveled thousands of miles <laughs> to tell somebody that your life will never be the same. <laughs> you may walk out of here and get in the same car, same key, same house, maybe even the same job. But when God changes your view, when he changes your mind there is something so awesome that happens when he told the children of israel in exodus that the egyptians whom you see today you shall see no more forever it makes me take note of who moses was talking to moses was not only talking to the grandparents he was talking to the parents he was talking to the children and God says, my word that comes out of my mouth shall not return unto me void. So the enemy in which you see today, you shall see no more forever, does not just pertain to you, but your children and your children's children. And to them who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Whoa, what are you talking about, Moses? Because the children of Israel as a nation, they saw an Egyptian again. What do you mean the enemy that you see today? You shall see no more forever. Well, what God was about to do was two things. The Egyptian nation who was following Israel 
was about to be drowned in the Red Sea that day. But then God was going to give Israel a mental perspective that the enemy that you see today, the boss that you thought was the enemy, the test that you thought was the enemy, the pain that you thought was the enemy. God said, I hardened Pharaoh's heart. You got it wrong. You've been going through and you've been saying, God, why me? Going through saying, God, take this thorn from my flesh. But God said, I sent it. I sent, I sent it. I sent it. The enemy you see today, you shall see no more forever, meaning the way in which you saw it as a test. You, you saw it as a storm. You perceived it to be the enemy. But when you find that, wow, my relationship with God has, has heightened since this test. I, I find myself thanking him in another way. I, I find myself thinking and thanking. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I think of the goodness of Jesus. I have found another law working in me that when I would complain that I find myself praising. The enemy you see today, he shall see no more forever. It's not just about God alleviating the test. It's not about going to that job and that person who done bothered you for the last five years being fired. Oh, no. It's about you going home with tears in your eyes, wrapping a gift, and putting that person's name on it. Putting it in your car every step you take, just cry out, my father, what are you doing, God? He said, I'm trying to burn you up because that attitude stinks in my presence. I'm in your presence, God, and it's the fullness of joy, and, and I'm laying on the altar, but there's some characteristics and some things about us that don't smell too well in God's nostrils. So he's saying, I'm trying to burn it away. Consuming fire, burning away. That's how he burns it up. At the altar, there's revelation. At the altar, there's another level of submission. Yes, God, I will. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure about who, what, when, where, why, but yes, God, I'll go. Moses said, I'll go. Not knowing all the details, we'll go. But God says, take that boss. That, 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 that's been harping on you for five years, giving you more work than everybody. Everybody around you getting raises but you. Give them a gift. <laughs> All right. God is saying, I want you to press through the resistance. There's a resistance there. Well, I don't want to be obedient. I don't want to. There's a resistance there that you've got to break out. Because you've got to break out before you break through. Mm. The enemy you see today, you'll see no more forever. I need somebody to catch that in the spirit. The resistance is required. You know how you go to register for classes and they say there's a prerequisite? The fire is a prerequisite for the coming out. The resistance is a prerequisite for what God wants to do in your life. Without resistance, there can be no breaking out. There can be no breakthrough where there is no resistance. So the resistance that you have in your life, God says, it's necessary for the next level. It's necessary for what I want to do in your life. It's necessary for heart and mind change. But God says, I want you to press on. I see poverty, but God, you see me wealthy, rich, and increased with goods. How do I press through this? How do I press through bad health? How do I press through mental disorder? How do I press through the way that I see myself and what others have said about me? You don't understand, Pastor. This is a very real thing. I go home and I look in the mirror and the thoughts of my past, they haunt me. 
The thoughts of my past are staring back at me. So what, how am I supposed to break through this? How is the enemy that I see today, I'm going to see no more? Well, God says there's a press when you praise. There's a press in your obedience. There's a press when you do what you're uncomfortable with. He say you're pressing out. Is God challenging you to do something uncomfortable? Is God challenging you to say something uncomfortable? Because the Bible says you shall have whatsoever you say. The enemy on today may not be a person. In Israel, when Moses spoke to them, he was literally talking about the Egyptian army that was on their track. But the enemy on today might have another name. The name might be depression. The name might be abuse. The name might be bad health. The name has an assignment to it. But God says the enemy that you see today, what you're experiencing today, that I am able to help you to not only break out, but to break through what you are going through. I'm able to do it by my word. The spoken word is powerful, people of God. The Bible says, in the beginning, God said, and it was. The enemy wants to close your mouth. Ever since I got this assignment, the enemy has literally (laughs) been trying to close my mouth. Shooting pain, stuff going on. Like, what in the world? Am I going to be able to talk in Florida? The enemy wanted me to close my mouth. Because the greatest sabotage that many believers experience is not that from without. It's many times that within. It's those self-thoughts. It's that self-talk. It's that, oh, I can't do it because. I I will never be. I, I tried it and it didn't work. But God says, you've got to change that whole disposition. That on the altar, as I'm burning up the old you, the new you is coming out transformed with a new attitude, as they say. Ah, Talking differently, walking differently. We're coming out. So many believers have come out in the sense of, I got new life in Christ. I, I've been born again. We change Facebook status. We, we, we change our profile picture. We go in and delete some things, and we go in and change some things. But God says, I not only want you to come out, but I want you to come through. Because many believers who are calling on the name of Jesus have changed their life physically address, clothing, attire. But God says, I want to get far beyond your external self and I want to get to your mind. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. We can learn the verse, quote the verse, sing the verse, but how do we live that verse, God says? By not only breaking out, you break out. I'm a Christian and I love Jesus. You break out the life that I used to live. I don't live no more. You break out. But God says, I want you to break through. I want you to be the first millionaire in your family. I want you to write the book. I want you to start the business. I want you to start the nonprofit organization. I not only want you to break out of sin, uh huh, but I want you to break through and break forth and be an example to those that come behind you. Many times, God is so amazing, he will call you to do something that you absolutely have no idea how you're going to do it. Me, I I don't have a preacher in my family, no pastors, no evangelists. I got a few evangelists, they just on the wrong side right now. They passing a different drug right now. They'll be passing Jesus soon. I got a few evangelists in my family. I'm going to speak that thing out. But God will call you to do something. God, wait, wait. You got your coordinates mixed up. So I was at the altar, 
And then my sister girl was at the altar and she had on the same brown as me. So when you sit down the vision and the strategy, I think you meant her. You know, you know, I, I think you got it wrong. We we our names somewhat sound the same because you know how folks can get stuff wrong. Miss America is, but she's really, you know, <laughs> you know, we 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 can mess stuff up. You know, so sometimes we try to apply that to God. God, you mess this up. You know, I can't start a nonprofit organization. 501c3, is that the address? The font? What is that? 501c3. Do you know where 501c3 is? That's how sometimes unknowledgeable we are about the topic or the purpose that God will call us to. No, nothing. <laughs> Traveling where? God, I've never heard of that place. But God will many times call you to an area where you're not confident because he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Not your weakness. I'm I'm sick with the flu. I'm weak. That's weak, right? Or God, I didn't learn how to really walk correctly, so I got a little bit of a, society would consider that weakness, because in the event that you robbed, they would say, you know, weakness. No, 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 not that type of weakness. Weakness in the sense of that that you are not confident or capable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) God will call you to the very thing that you say, me? Oh, Lord, how am I going to do this? How am I going to build it? Except the Lord built the house, they that labor, labor. How am I going to build the work? How am I going to build the ministry? God says, because I'm going to give you strategy. To build that wooden stand took a blueprint. I'm not going to give you the wood. I'm going to give you the strategy. I'm not going to give you the 501c3 paperwork filled out the building. I'm going to give you the strategy. And I'm going to tell you to go into that neighborhood and rescue those youth and have an after school program. I'm going to give you the strategy. Now you put it to work, baby. But God, how? He said the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. Woo! God is calling you to something. Oh, yeah. He wants to interrupt normally scheduled thoughts. But I thought I was just going to worship. God. Prerequisite is resistance. So God, you're telling me as I have come into the Vine Worship Center this morning that you want to do something different in my life. Okay, I understand. You've done a lot of different in my life. All righty, Jesus, what are you talking about? So you're saying that I have broken out somewhat, okay? All right. You're telling me that the enemy within me is what I got to deal with. I got, I got to deal with that fella. But then God also says there's some things that needs to happen in the spirit in order to get the breakthrough that you need. There's, there's, there's one other thing that needs to happen before you walk into the next. Anybody feel a next in their spirit? I so feel a next. Like, God, you've been cleaning up some things. You've been getting rid of some folk out of my life. You done shut the whole planet down. <laughs> Literally. I feel like a next is on the way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But God says something else has to happen. There has to be the word that I hear in my spirit is an awakening. And that's where our New Testament text comes in. There, there has to be an awakening. So you understand the first text in reference to the enemy that you see today. It may not be a person. It could be a place, a thing, a thought. The thought that you don't take captive will take you captive. Can I, can I drop that in the middle right there before I go to New Testament? The thought that you don't take captive will take you captive. That, that, that thought, you've you got to interrupt the thought 
right in the middle. Oh, you'll never. Excuse me, I will open up the nonprofit organization, even though I just asked you where's 501c3 located. Don't laugh at me. God's going to do a great work in my life. Because sometimes when you don't know stuff and you call yourself trying to get some information, folk will try to make fun of you. But you know what? You actually need them because God's going to prepare a table. So as you're going, you'll actually collect more of them than you think you need. That'll say, what are you doing? That will laugh at you. And then you find out what 501c3 is and you on Facebook like nonprofit status and they're like, oh, she found it. Yes, baby, I found the address. Thank you. All you got to do is put in your Facebook post, I found the address with your paperwork. Because sometimes when you venture out to do stuff, you really don't know. You just, it's what it is. You really just don't know. So the thought that you don't take captive will ultimately try to take you captive. So when we scoot over to the New Testament, God wants you to have an awakening. He said, Lazarus. What did he say? Come forth, right? Those three words, I did some extensive study on it. I love the Hebrew, the Greek, the Old Testament, New Testament, the hermeneutics. I I love the meat and why scripture is where it is. So I'm not going to give you everything that I learned from that verse, but I'm going to give it to you in context to the word breakout and breakthrough. Lazarus, come forth. So there are some things that happen to you in your past, all right, that try to stop you from your purpose. Sharina, I want you to talk to young women and let them know that they are loved, that they are beautiful, that they are, I do my texts, my messages, hey, beautiful, hey, beautiful, hey, beautiful. Oh, pastor, we just love how you just call us beautiful because just some things be going on and you don't even know when that beautiful just, you know, hey, beautiful. And I said, well, God, how am I going to minister to young women? All right, foster care. All right, I learned about washing clothes through YouTube. God, how do I mother these children? How how do I separate? Oh, I separate the reds from the jeans, from the color. I'm talking about basic things that I did not get via my childhood, via the sexual abuse, via the abduction. I was mentally, physically here, but I was mentally somewhere else. I didn't get it. So when I became a wife to my husband, Google became my best friend because too many people would laugh when I asked the question. Well, you don't know how to wash? You, you don't know how to clean the tennis shoes? Can they go in the washer? Do you take the shoestrings out? Do you? No, I didn't know. So, God, you want me to teach young girls what? I, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Someone who tried to take their own life. Someone who had a daughter, was pregnant at the age of 13. Just, you want me to talk to who? So I want to talk to like the adults or can I like talk to the seniors and go to the senior facility and just sing a little bit. I worship you. Can I just kind of, can I praise dance? Oh God, I would love to praise dance. God, put a flag in my hand, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Let me praise dance. But God said, no, I want you to use your mouth and speak. But God, when I'm around people, they use them like these 14, 16 letter words that I don't understand. And, you know, I don't tell them at the moment. I just shake my head and I'm back there Googling what the word means. You want me to do what? Uh, Okay. All right, God. I'll speak. Yes, Lord. I'll open my mouth and decree and declare what thus said the Lord. And when I decided to make that declaration. All hell broke loose in my life. But I said, yes. But I said, I'll go. I said, I'll do, God. I just want to let you know on today, just a little small print at the bottom, that as you walk out of this place and begin to write another page in the book, as you begin to fill out another form of the 501c3, as you, as you begin to contact the publisher about the book and put together the child care center, as you begin to do what God is calling you to do and you happy about it, and the woman of God came from Cleveland, Ohio, and she told me that the Lord is going to bless the work of my hands and everything I put my foot to do prospers. And you in the hospital next week, almost ICU, like what? What? 
ICU, but how am I in intensive care unit? And you said, and you said, and you said, while you're in ICU, I've got to praise, I've got to praise, and i got to get it out. Because God's word will not return unto him void, so the ICU is just a stepping stone, it's just a testimony, because he told Paul, you must go to Rome. So the snake bite couldn't kill him. The shipwreck couldn't kill him. Hey, so you ought to be in ICU like, hey, ma'am, could you, could you help me out the bed a little bit? Hey, because it's just a stepping stone. Okay. What? You want to leave me? And we've been together for 10 years? I don't, what are you talking about? I thought we were about to get married. I thought we were about to, and he leaves out the door and shuts the door. What? I give you all the glory. We worship. It produces another kind of worship. Hey, <laughs> I'm walking in purpose, and now all hell is breaking loose. I, I, I thought I was about to experience the blessing and favor of the Lord. I just wanted to put that small print in there so you don't be messaging me like, Pastor. I done filled out a page, and now I got cramps in my hand, and the doctor's trying to say my hands won't move. What's going on? Is this God? Oh, yes, it's God. Use it actually as a testament that it is God when you experience the test, when you experience the trouble that you might face when you decide to not only break out but to break through. So God has to speak to the spirit of the matter. When I said, God, you want me to do what? When God looked at the tomb of Lazarus, Lazarus' spirit was in Sheol, Abraham's bosom. In Abraham's bosom. And in that time, they would put your body in the tomb. It was above ground. They had different pockets. You go into the tomb in different, basically, rooms in the tomb. And your body would sit in there to decay until they ultimately buried you. So decaying rooms, a place that stunk, a place that if you went, you'll be considered unclean, according to Jewish culture. So Lazarus' body was in there, but then his spirit was in Abraham's bosom. So Abraham's bosom at that time had only had an a entrance door, for lack of better words, just a metamorph, metamorph door. And uh, they would go in there, and they were waiting, they were waiting, they were waiting. They were waiting for the promised Savior, just waiting. So Lazarus is there because the Bible says to be absent from the body, to be present. You, you are living a natural experience, but you are eternal being. So his eternal was one place and his temporary was another place. So God says, as I'm telling you to break out and to break through on this morning, some of you need an awakening. Because your spirit and your body is in two different places. I, I, I heard what Pastor said, but everything in my body feels dead. I heard what was said, but it seems to be a disconnect. Have anybody ever felt like it seems to be a disconnect? Like, I don't get it. Sharina, you just heard what the bishop said. You said you would do, you leave this place and you do opposite. Girl, what's wrong with you? Have you ever had that conversation with yourself like, I know that I'm supposed to encourage myself. I know that I'm supposed to be the example. I'm standing in aisle seven next to the grits. And God is telling me to prophesy to the woman over there in pink. And I'm standing there. And I'm ready, and I've been to the altar. I'm a burnt sacrifice. Why is your mouth closed, Sharina? What is the disconnect? I need you to not only hear the word, but be obedient to the word. So in aisle seven, next to the grits, I need you to prophesy my word, and I'll take care of the rest. All right, God. Sometimes there's a, 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 a disconnect between what God is trying to do in your life. So Jesus, when he stood there and all his wisdom, oh, my God, just so submitted, eternal being in that flesh. 
I know he had to feel cooped up in that body. But he decided to exercise his heavenly authority in the earth. He said, Lazarus. So all of the people down there in Abraham's bosom was looking around like, hey, Lazarus, somebody calling you. Lazarus is like, huh? But this place only has an entrance door. I hear Jesus calling me, but I have no way to get to him. I hear you telling me to do this, God, but I have no way of doing it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So God in all of his magnificence, metamorphically, again, says, I'm going to create an exit door where one does not exist. Because if I called you, you've got to come forth. Lazarus. Jesus, is that you calling me? He had to be released out of Abraham's bosom and answer the call. Hey, where has, oh my God, where there has only been entrance. Where the people are waiting for the promised Savior. Lazarus. Somebody is calling you. There were many Lazarus in the bosom. But God knew specifically who he was calling and Lazarus knew specifically. So you don't have to worry about when God is telling you to do something if his coordinates is mixed up. If your name is Sharina and hers is too. He said Lazarus and he had to answer. So Lazarus comes from the bosom. And he's now in the body. Lazarus. He's in the body. But the body is dead. The body is sinking. The body is decaying. It's been about four days. So God, you mean to say that you called me out of waiting. And now I done answered the call. And now I'm in a dead place. <laughs> I'm in a stinking place. <laughs> I'm doing your will and it don't seem like things is working out. I, I can't get the lawyer to fill out the paperwork for the 501c3. I, I done found the building but don't have the funds. God, I heard you say Lazarus and I came forth. But now I find myself still. I just went to, and now pandemic, What? I finally started it. I finally wrote it. And now the world is closed down. God, I answered. Come on, give me a break, God. Now I'm laying here still. Can't leave out the house. Got to cover up my face. Prophetic word coming out. Facial expression. Folk can't see. Oh, Jesus. Lord, give me a break, God. But God said, all right. I spoke to the spirit of the matter, and there was an awakening. You answered. But now I got to speak to your body. He said, come forth. And that body came together. And them bones came back together. And them ankles came back together. Oh, my God. God said, I want to speak to the spirit of the matter <laughs> so that there's an awakening. <laughs> You've got to change your mind first. <laughs> your body is only going to do what your mind tells it to. <laughs> so he said, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> he said, Mary. There shall be a performance of the things I said. I'm going to do the thing. He said, I'm going to do the thing. So Lazarus, I spoke to the spirit of the matter. Come forth. I spoke to the natural aspect of the matter. Because all ministry deals with people, place, and purpose. So your ministry is connected to a person. Your ministry is not just in the spirit. God has to manifest that thing. Jesus touched people. Peter ministered to people. We give him our gifts are meant to be giving. We're only a sacrifice because we're a gift given. Gifts are only beneficial when they're given. So you are a gift that God wants to give to the world. But he's got to say, Lazarus, come forth. I, I need your spirit to be in alignment. I need your body to be in alignment. He 
say, I want to do the thing. Well, I want to do the thing. But I got to line this thing up because there's a disconnect. Huh. I'm hearing one thing, but doing something else. I hear what you're saying. You called me a prophet to the nations. Hey. But then I go to the bank account. How can a prophet to the nations have five dollars? How is this possible? How can someone who's going to start a, a child care center bear no children? Hey. I don't understand what you are talking about, God. I don't understand. I hear what you are saying. I perceive the Lazarus. I perceive you calling me. And I feel like me coming to church and, and pressing in worship. I'm, I'm pressing out. But God says out is not enough. I need you to press through. Because somebody's purpose and destiny is connected to your assignment. And the longer you wait, the longer you don't do, the longer there's a disconnect. Hell is excited. Hell is all full of joy. But the moment Lazarus came forth out of that tomb, I don't care about the fact that he was bound. He came a-leaping. The enemy can't stop your praise. You don't got to wait until you all the way loose. The enemy can't stop you from jumping and giving God glory. All right, she done came to her senses. She has a connection now. Looser. Looser. Let her go. Let him go. He done been through hell and high water and he's still praising. Oh my God, he's been tempted to leave his family, but he's still going. She thought 501c3 was an actress, but she got it and she got her paperwork. Loose her and let her go. God said, I'm going to lose somebody on this morning because you need to break out and break through. Break out and break through. Out is not enough. Out shows that there's been some change. Out shows there's a difference. But when you break through, you do war in the enemy's camp. All right, it's, it's one thing to do war here. Hallelujah. Out, she'll grab a mic and sound melodious. Oh, thank you, Jesus. My husband will grab a mic and just sound awesome up in here. Doing what this means, war, break out. But how about you take that war, take that praise into the camp of the enemy? Oh, you a bad boy. <laughs> you a bad girl. <laughs> hey, see, the enemy don't want kingdom on two feet. He want kingdom in the walls. <laughs> he want kingdom maybe on the radio, the television. But he don't want kingdom on two feet. <laughs> uh, he don't want kingdom in my hands. <laughs> he don't want kingdom in my mouth. Because you become what's called armed and dangerous. Armed and dangerous. Hey, your praise is armed and dangerous. You are a general woman of God. The devil is a liar. He done mess with the wrong one. He done mess with the wrong one. Woo! What you did right here, you need to do out there. I don't care if you listen. I will set up a bath rug, a crate with some tennis shoes on and preach in the corner. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To those that believe, come on somebody. So if you got a speaker that's about that size or smaller. If you got a little mic. I dare you to stand right where you came from. Right where the enemy said you wouldn't make it. I dare you to stand right. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? 
I dare you to set it up right there. Folk going to call you crazy. This is not Sunday. This is not a worship experience. There's no praise team behind you, but there's deliverance in your mouth, honey. There's deliverance in your soma. There's deliverance locked in your belly. And God says you done broke out, but now you need to break through. Because your breakthrough, others break through. It's contingent on you. You have a responsibility. And you have the ability to respond. I love how God gives us responsibility. Because he won't give you a, 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 a he will give you the ability to respond to it. He won't call you to an assignment that he won't equip you for. God, a children's organization, and I have babies. Hey. God, you want me to minister to married couples and mine didn't? Lord, have mercy. Oh, good God. There is a national cry that's been locked in your belly, woman of God. You got to release that thing. There is a general anointing. There is another kind of surrender that you have to walk in for this next. <laughs> Lazarus, he did it. He came. Come forth. God says, you ready to be loosed, honey. You ready to be loose. I don't know your biblical training education. I don't know how long you've been in the body. But when God says it's time, it's time. You got to release that because other people's breakthrough, not just kingdom citizens. I'm talking about those that are warring with the adversary of our souls. They will find themselves walking by one day. You done lost your mind, girl. They go through a little storm, them little God storms. And they come back again and hear your worship. Next thing you know, they like, yesterday, I know I talked about you, but I went through some stuff and I'm back and I need God to save me. And I, I'm talking about altar call right there in the middle of the neighborhood. It sounds crazy, but you got to do it crazy sometimes. It sounds crazy, but you got to do it crazy sometimes. There is business expansion. Lord, have mercy. There must be a lot of business owners in here. Oh, my gosh. Does everyone have a business? Whoa. I just see, like, a crop of, like, people who got their own stuff. I mean, who done created generational wealth. I mean, it's just a lot. I mean, I, 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 it's, like, all over the place. <laughs> Like I saw one person and then another person, another person. Another, oh, whoa, it's a lot of business owners up in this place who is creating generational wealth. Like you get an idea, and God is calling that idea to be a platform for business. This is not just the normal ministry. This is a ministry that is called to break financial bondage. The finances that's going to come up in here, that's coming up in here to build, to tear down, to lose what? Oh, my gosh. Whoop. That's what your businesses are for. Oh, yes, your businesses are for you and your family. But your business is to build this ministry. Oh, yeah. When God blesses you with increase, the house increases. You get an extra client that you didn't know you was going to get. It's extra coming into the house. Hey! A hundred dollar offer this Sunday, but two hundred dollar next Sunday. Five hundred dollars. What? Oh my God! Oh my God! He is blowing my mind right now. He is blowing right 
Now, somebody's supposed to have a business that ain't started it yet. What are you doing? Wake up, Lazarus, come forth. Did, did God not give you enough on today? Somebody need to get the paperwork. LLC paperwork on the state website. Somebody need to get to that thing like right away. Because God is creating some things. There are some ministries where people are lined up and, and healing and deliverance. You guys are going to do some things financially in Orlando, Florida for the homeless population. <laughs> Don't hold back the finances. Everything that you release, a hundredfold. Did you hear me? Don't hold back the finances. Everything that you release, a hundredfold. Because this man and woman of God will do right by it. Oh yeah, you got to worry in some places. What? But they'll do right by it. There are business owners. Some of you guys, you're so broken, you just ready. Have you ever been, not financially, but just so broke that you find yourself ready for anything? Have you ever heard that a desperate times can call for desperate measures? Well, we're in desperate times. The enemy is killing our babies. The enemy is at our children. The enemy is at our marriages. The enemy is at our identity. I don't know if I'm a woman. I don't know if I'm a man. The enemy is after us. But God says, you guys are chain breakers. Breakers. Just broken on purpose. Woo. You've been broken on purpose, sis. Yeah. I don't know who you are, your name. Don't tell me. Broken on purpose. Just all the way broke up. But God says, I can put it back together. But I'll put it back together right put it back together the right way. I don't need your input. I don't need you to be touching stuff and talking about stuff and saying stuff. I need you to let me do it. In your submission, I'm doing it. In your yes, I'm doing it. In your amen, I'm doing it. In your consistency, I'm doing it. In your brokenness, it wasn't the enemy. Don't feel like the enemy, sound like the enemy. But God says it was good that you were afflicted. It was good. It didn't feel good. I know you want to slap me right now. Girl, what you talking about? It was good that you were afflicted. It hurt in another kind of way. You can't even describe to us the pain. But it was good that you have been afflicted that you might learn to trust the Savior in another kind of way. It's another kind of way, Caesar. It's not business as usual. You're not leaving up out of here the same person. Do you understand that? That mentally some things is going on where the enemy can no longer attack you like he's been attacking you mentally? Do you understand that God is worthy to be praised for that? Do you understand that your submission is breaking forth an open heaven in your life? An open heaven is over you. Ask what you will. Ask. What do you need from God? What do you need from God? You're standing under an open heaven. Healing. Deliverance. Finances. In the name of Jesus. You can ask. 
million dollar businesses. You know how sometimes you say, if he did it before, he can do it again. God sometimes says there needs to be a John the Baptist. There needs to be a forerunner. God says, watch these two right here, this couple right here. He says, watch them. God's going to do something so great in their finances. God is about to release them. I don't know what y'all doing. I don't know what you guys are putting in place. I don't know what paperwork you're looking at. God said, go for it. It is yours. I, it's a, another level. Another level. Another level. When the church is able to look and glean business classes. Another level. Woo-wee. God is doing a great work in this place. He's doing a great work in this house. And God says, I need you to follow them as they follow Christ. They are examples. They give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And God says you will only be blessed when you are obedient to this man and woman of God. He says they have what's good for you. They have what's good for you that's going to nourish you, that's only going to lead you in a prosperous way, even if it doesn't make sense to you. I need everybody to give a thousand dollars. What is she talking about? God said there's something in her mouth. When she says something, I need you to do that thing. God says my word is in her mouth. God says I've given her what to say. So when you speak woman of God, you can leave it alone because it's God. They have to answer to God for it. When she speaks, there's a blessing in the obedience. The prophet of the house, the bishop of the house, he only wants to see you do well and prosper the work of your hands. It won't all be, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. There'll be some instruction. There'll be some, get right, church. <laughs> hallelujah. But it's all for our good. Father, we bless you on today for not only breaking out, but breaking through. We thank you, Lord God, for 13 years of ministry. We thank you for new beginnings. We, we thank you for government, God. We thank you for grace, oh God. And now as you set Divine Worship Center to go to another level of impacting Orlando, Florida, and the surrounding counties, the surrounding cities, and ultimately the nation, ultimately the world will feel their impact. Oh, yes. As you cause them to continue to walk forward in purpose and assignment. God, we pray your blessing upon them. God, we pray your blessing upon their ministry. God, we pray your blessing upon the people of God. We pray your blessing upon the finances. We pray your blessing, oh God, on our minds. That we will have a mind change after today. That we will have mind renewal after today. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise for that wonderful and awesome word from the woman of God. Were you blessed today? Were you blessed today? Listen. Real quick, I'm going to let them go and see something, but the Spirit of the Lord was saying something to me as, as Pastor was talking about being in ICU. It's a place of isolation. God said a lot of you are hurting. And in this particular place of isolation, you know, even with the pandemic going on and things of that nature, you feel alone because nobody can't come and see you because there's so many things going on. 
but I heard the spirit of the Lord say, he said, I told you in my word, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. He said, and I just need to let you know today that even in that condition, I see you. I see you. Hallelujah. He has something already lined up for your life. Something that you yet yeah, that you're destined to accomplish, that the circumstances and cares of life can't even interfere with it. It's just a delay. Hallelujah. What God has that's for you is for you. Amen. Come on, let's give the woman of God a hand clap of praise. You bless my heart today. Hallelujah. We'll turn it over to Pastor Toby. what she shared on today. I also thank God for um, Sister Shalanda's obedience because the way we are connected with this woman of God is last year they happened to be visiting in Florida and Shalanda was driving Lyft and she happened to pick them up and they started talking and she just started talking about Christ and the church and invited them to come and they were on vacation and came during vacation to church, and I'm not even sure we were fully open during the pandemic at that time, and just a connection. She helped me publish my book last year. Her and her family flew down on their own dime to be there to support me, and we've been working on so many projects together, so I just thank God for the connection. Amen. And we just speak blessings over you and over your husband and everything attached to your ministry. Let me tell you, the things that they do, you definitely got to go and look. They touch so many lives, and they don't do it to get anything back, but they do it because that's what God commissioned for them to do. So I know she got a book coming out soon. I can't wait because we're going to pre-order so we can all get one, amen, and be a blessing. So right now, I just need you to get a seed. We want to be a blessing to the woman of God. So you could do it through Cash App. Just put Pastor on there and I'll know if you want to give something by cash. Deacon Durrell is in the back. He'll have the basket. But please, please, let's be a mighty blessing. They came all the way down from Ohio to be a blessing to us. Amen. And then as we are closing out next week, don't forget we have Pastor Tila Shauna who will be with us. So it'll be another blessing. Amen. Amen and amen. We're about to close, but I want everyone to stand. Amen. And I'm going to have Sister Dolores ask me if she could share something. And then Sister Dolores, if you can us out in prayer as soon as you're done. Amen. Wait a minute now. Listen, if you, if, you, if you feel led to drop something in their hand, put it in their hand. Amen. What you got? Oh, this for us. Shoot, you all right with me. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Let's see what this is. Oh, nice. Oh, hallelujah. Of oh, me and my babies. We just took this picture last week. <laughs> Glory to God. You move swiftly. I just said. Huh? I said. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We love you guys. I'm telling you, that's family. Yeah. Amen. That's Amen. family. Glory to God. Look at that. We cute. I just Save said, that for later, baby. I just said I got to print that picture. We just took that picture last Sunday. So thank you, thank you, thank you. She always comes with a blessing. Amen. So, Pastor Greg, do you want to say anything before we close out? Can I, can I, can I, can I sing? Yo, come on. Can I do a little bit? And we know God is the greatest power we shall never never be defeated and we know god is the greatest power we shall never never be defeated the devil is a liar god is exalted Never be defeated, never be defeated, the devil is a liar, God is exalted, never be defeated.
time done had our little conversation. It's slow food, but Lord, help me. So I got to do more than what I'm doing. We are going to bless someone else. We don't know who it is. It's someone randomly. Their letter start, the, their name starts with the letter of the alphabet. That's all you're going to know. I'm not going to tell you who it is. But I need you to sow a seed because it may be you. We want to sow a seed into our family. We're church family. We're not related by blood that, okay, we have the same mama, we got the same daddy. We got the same daddy, Jesus. God, the same father. We're all connected together. That vine is still connecting us. So I need you to sow a seed. You can send it through the cash app. You can put it in my hand. We'll take your dollars. Everybody thinks dollar bills ain't no good anymore. Yeah, they are. We'll take it. Whatever way you want to plant that seed. Remember, this is just not, it may not be your time. But we're going to keep doing this this year. 